another incredible letter from Spain. And this time, <laughs> it holds a treasure from the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Really appreciate it. I want to share another super sweet letter from a Spanish subscriber. And you know, I'm not sure what is going on with these Spanish stackers who watch my channel, but wow, you guys are making a statement. Your your generosity, your kindness, it's, it's a, I'm duly impressed. And the letter, the letter, dude. <laughs> Handwritten, double-sided. I mean, you Spaniards know how to write. Okay, so let's let's dive in right now. So, uh, July 8th, and uh, it says, Dear Yankee, as people usually say, a promise is a promise. Well, first of all, dude, I didn't know we had made any, any sort of promise, so I don't know what you're talking about there, but again, thank you. <laughs> so here I am writing this letter to you. I've been watching your videos for a while now, and I must confess that I enjoy them rather a lot. I believe that all the content you put into them speaks on its own without needing to know about who Yankee really is in person. But those bits we perceive from your persona are just fabulous. Well, I'm going to be uh, getting embarrassed here, but thank you so much, my friend. It's a privilege to uh, you know share uh, what I know and, and get to know people in the community. Thank you so much for your kind words. Really nice. All right, let's move on. My nickname in YouTube is Lancaster. Now, we've seen Lancaster in some streams. I, he, he keeps popping up. You probably recognize that name. He, he puts the four in where the A's go. I think that's really cool. <laughs> so his nickname's Lancaster because I love World War II bombers and that part of human history. But my real name is Fernando. Now, I did ask Fernando if I could share this uh, letter with you. He, he had absolutely no problem with you knowing his first name there. Somewhat of a, a, a World War II uh, buff myself, uh, Fernando. And I love the Lancaster. I mean, really, it's the most famous and successful uh, uh, bomber in the Royal Air Force, the RAF, during World War II. Fantastic choice. Uh, it's an epic aircraft, dude. Crews were, you know, legendary. So wonderful uh, YouTube name there. <laughs> um, let's see. I am 36 years old, happily married with a Cape Town lady and a father of two lovely twin girls who turned two years old in July. Well, that's awesome, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. We live in this lovely European corner in the northeast coast of Spain, very close to France. The city is called San Sebastian, and if any time you consider traveling around, it would be a pleasure to show you and your family around. Dude, <laughs> if I ever get to Spain, and especially the northern uh, coastal area that you live in, we are definitely meeting up, my friend. The purpose of this letter is nothing but thank you for your influence on me to finally start stacking in a more serious way without being irresponsible or without adding any excessive pressure on my capabilities. It's a great point. Balance. You know, I, I, I did a video not too long ago on uh, not to panic stack, not to compromise your financial well-being and possibly have to sell your silver and gold prematurely, right? It, it happens. I've seen it happen in our community way too often. So you are a wise man, my friend. That That's awesome. I also wanted to put yourself or put you in my shoes when it comes to stacking by explaining to you how things work in the EU and Spain in particular. But after watching that lovely video of yours about Raphael's letter, I wanted to add, I, I, I won't add much else because he explained it rather well. Well, <laughs> Raphael, Raphael uh, sent me a letter and it was really special. I learned a lot. I did a, a video on it. He was very generous too. He gave me a wonderful coin, very special. And he, he's struggling or has struggled stacking silver especially. It meant a lot to me. In fact, it meant a lot to a lot of you out there that are watching because I think it really resonated with, with people and it really touched their hearts. In fact, I know it touched their hearts because people have been sending 
all kinds of gifts for Raphael. Check this out, guys. Look at this. <laughs> this is the community we're a part of. This is the heart of the collectors and stackers on uh, YouTube that watch and, and take part. This is incredible. I'll be sending that out real soon to Raphael, but wow. Yes, Raphael's letter was really special. All right, so as he mentioned, Raphael, stacking here is highly taxed, but I personally believe it's still a sensible idea to divert some or perhaps quite a lot of our reserves into gold and silver. You know, that's a, a great point. People actually were commenting on Raphael's uh, uh, letter and that video saying it is sensible, it is smart to stack silver and gold even in the EU. So yes, that's awesome, good insight. It is a big pain to pay 21% of taxes in any profits we make but looking at the bigger picture, it does happen the same to any savings plan that the banking system has to offer. One of your Silver Dragon's colleagues said the other day that there are some possibilities out there to cash out of gold and silver without saying hello to the revenue offices or here in the United States, the IRS, Internal Revenue Service. So yes, this is another uh, great point you mentioned uh, profits there. Here in the US, we have capital gains taxes that we must pay anytime we sell anything of value for a profit. I say of value because, you know, when we sell you know, old stuff or used stuff at a, at a yard sale or something, that's usually not considered capital gains because, you know, it's uh, the value of the stuff is kind of depreciated through use. But when you sell your gold and silver and you make money on it, you owe taxes. Now, it's not necessarily 21%. That is incredibly high, but it is true. You, 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 you hit the nail on the head there. It was uh, great to hear that kind of sincerity because we all know that without saying it openly. <laughs> but don't worry, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> In fact, it would be great if one day you could talk about regulations on how to travel with gold and silver on a plane, for example. You know, I like that title. Interesting idea. I think I will uh, do that. If one day we decide to do something nice with our real money, that could be traveling. Don't you think? Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could pay in gold our own holidays? <laughs> it's just a retirement dream I have. Oh, that's a great dream. I like that, Fernando. <laughs> Meanwhile, I won't waste any ounces on anything material due to my main concern on the near future to come is to have a proper insurance policy. Yes, I preach this a lot silver and gold are primarily, at least in my opinion, and I think yours too, an insurance policy. I have home uh, insurance. I have health insurance. I, I have auto insurance. I need inflation insurance. You need inflation insurance. Well, well put there. I'm so glad you said that, Fernando. Uh, let me tell you about this coin now. Oh, this is great. Uh, my impression on you uh, is that you're being a good person, I can tell. Well, thank you. Is that you are a true American one. The kind who is got those old school values I always respected and wanted not to be lost among my generation or the next ones to come. Ooh, yeah, he gets deep here. Unfortunately, those tend to fade gradually for the sake of selfishness and individualism which makes us less involved in our local communities. But I strongly believe that life is about sharing and giving back. Wow. Fernando, thank you for saying that too. You know, um, uh, we Americans have always you know, valued our uh, rugged individualism. Um, well, at the same time, historically we've been one of the most generous and giving nations on the planet 
because we've been blessed as Americans. We've been given a lot. And to whom much is given, much will be required. It's, it's in our beliefs. It's in our heritage. You know, and I think you're right, though. It, it, it does. This, this generosity, this giving uh, does tend to gradually fade. That's why this community of stackers and collectors is so amazing. Unlike any other I've seen on YouTube. And the generosity, especially from you and other Spaniards, is, is just incredible. It's so appreciated. Again, thank you, Fernando, for this. Uh, I see you uh, promote these values. And due to you are so connected to your history, I wanted to send you this coin. Oh, guys, here it is. <laughs> what? Look at this. Isn't that amazing? Oh, it's called the Real de Ocho, or in English, Peace of Eight. Oh, man. Eight reals, a Spanish dollar. Because this coin was the first official currency in use in the U.S. It's got the king, it's got the, uh, let's see, it's got the face of, of King Carlos the Third in on one side, that's King Carlos the Third, and the Spanish shield on the back, the reverse. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Whoa! And uh, let's see, uh, both sides of the shield. On both sides of the shield, there is a very interesting feature: two columns. These two columns come from Greek mythology, and they're called Hercules columns, which represent the two continents, Africa and Europe, at the entrance of the Mediterranean Sea. This was for the, uh, this was for the Greeks, the end of the known world. I think you're talking about the Strait of Gibraltar, if I'm not mistaken. And, and I say, after having uh, dealt with the Spanish dollar for so long, the United States adopted those columns in the symbol of the dollar sign. Interesting, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's fascinating. Wow. Yeah, the dollar sign was derived from this uh, Spanish dollar depicting the pillars of Hercules. This coin in particular was minted in Mexico when it was a Spanish colony and it traveled to New Orleans in a ship called El Cazador or the Hunter. Whoa. But due to strong storms, the vessel sank and turned into a wreck in the waters off the Gulf of Mexico. So this coin has been submerged since 1784. Now the date on it, yes, yeah, 1783. So it was minted in Mexico in 1783. Didn't make it to New Orleans and became a wreck. Uh, which explains why the face of King Carlos III and some other bits of the coin aren't in best conditions. Well, <laughs> Fernando, I think it's a very good condition. Look at that. The back... Yeah, that reverse looks, uh, actually, that looks really good. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Whoa. You know what? I, I'm wondering if it, if it landed like this. That might explain why this side is more worn than that side. Maybe it was laying on a whole stack of silver. <laughs> you know what else is really cool about this? It's now the oldest coin in Yankees collection. 17 I have another half real. This one was dated 1797. And this one was given to me when I was a kid by my grandfather. Yeah, it's a little guy. <laughs> you can see the difference in a, in a half real and a full eight real. Oh, isn't that cool? Yeah, this one's really worn his face. You can really get the features on this one so man all right let's put that down and, and it does come with this 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 was really cool too there is a picture of the el cazador 
Wow. And you can see leaving Mexico, heading to New Orleans, and going down. It's in Spanish. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you wrote about it because that would have been hard for me to read. <laughs> okay, let's continue. I couldn't imagine anyone else better than you to, pos to possess this coin, Yankee. And it makes me very happy to send it to you. I will keep watching your videos and I wish you the best for the next years to come in these times of uncertainty. Kind regards, Fernando. P.S. Please apologize for my spelling mistakes. Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think of Fernando and this beautiful coin. Thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Really appreciate it. Check out the uh, description of my video. There's a lot of links in there for you. And as always, I hope your day is a-okay.